Uh, if you will, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're going to be looking at verses 6 through 14. The title of our message today is The First Step of Spiritual Maturity is God's Wisdom. God's Wisdom. And we can all use a little bit of wisdom, can't we? But uh, unfortunately, sometimes we just try to stick to the worldly wisdom. That we need. And uh, I'm doing some research on this, and I found a really interesting writing. But uh, if we are wise with true wisdom of souls, our first need of patience sends us to God. Amen? It's the first place that we want to go to. And we ask for patience. Of course, I've always heard, don't, don't pray for patience, but I tell you what, we do need that assistance. That's perseverance, to be able to persevere through the trials. And then we seek a refuge from the noise of life. We seek his peace and make some sense or some semblance of sense of, of this world. And we can only do it where? In Christ. And with our weakness, we call upon him to be our strength. When we finally realize that we are incapacitated, we can't really do it on our own. We seek him. And uh, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Amen. But there was a young man, he came to Socrates one day, and he said in substance, Mr. Socrates, I have come 1,500 miles to gain wisdom and learning. I want learning, so I come to you. Socrates, 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 Socrates said, come, follow me. He led the way down to the seashore. They waded out into the water until they were up to their waist. And then Socrates seized his companion and shoved him into the water and held his head under the water, and in spite of his struggles, Socrates continued to hold him under. Finally, when most of his resistance was gone, Socrates got him up out of the water, laid him on the bank, and Socrates went on about his business. Later on, when the young man uh, came to his senses, came back and he looked up at Socrates, he said, why? Why did you do this? He said, what one thing, while I held you underwater, what one thing did you want more than anything? He said, I wanted my breath. I wanted to breathe. He said, when you want wisdom as bad as you wanted your breath, then you will find it. Does that make sense? And I think we need to be seeking wisdom in our life. And, and listen, the one source that, that I know that we can find wisdom is where? God. God. You're not going to find it in the schools of higher education. Although they have education and they have a worldly wisdom, but we seek a higher wisdom. We seek a godly wisdom. Amen. That can only be found through God. Now, we do not discount education. Jesus while he was born an infant, grew in the wisdom of humanity, did he not? But he also had the wisdom of God more than ever before. So we don't want to discount the wisdom of higher education. We need education. But we need to seek the higher level of wisdom, which does not make sense world. Let's look at our scripture text. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, chapter six, uh, verse 6 through 14. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages 
for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I want to hold it there just a moment, and I want you to understand that the rulers today are no different than the rulers of then. Amen? They still discount the validity of Christ, and they work in their own understanding instead of the understanding of the Lord. Amen? Do we see that today? Yes. And so we need to be seeking, and when he, when he talks about speaking in a mystery, now this mystery cannot be found by worldly means. It can only be found through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ him alone. Can this mystery be found? Mystery is something that is difficult to find. Amen? It's something that is hidden. But it is not hidden to those who are walking in the Spirit of God, who are seeking the will of God. Now, do you all understand all these messages I've been bringing up to where we're getting to? Because we need the Spirit of God, don't we? To be able to determine the wisdom of God to be able to make the right decisions so we can walk in the Spirit of God. <laughs> it's, a, it's a mystery. But as it is written, verse 9, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You know what that's telling us? Is that we need to be this, to have the Spirit of God to realize the things that God has given us. And He's given it to us with no cost. All you need to do is to believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. Trust in Him. Now these things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. I'm going to tell you right now, we're seeing proof of this throughout. What is one thing they have deemed that is not necessary to the body of man? do this COVID, through this COVID. The church, they're saying you need to shut it down. We don't need it. I'm telling you more than ever before, we need the church. We need each other. There are people who are going off the realm because of their uh, being held captive within their own prisons. We need each other. We need each other to lean on. We need each other to laugh with. We need each other to cry on, to lean on when things don't go right. But the wisdom of man says, no, you need to shut them down because of the spreading of the virus. Well, I'll tell you what, what you're going to have is a lot worse than COVID-19 if you take away the church. Amen? I want to tell you one thing. When the church is taken away, when God takes his children home, the spirit of the Antichrist will be revealed at that point in time. There is nothing. COVID couldn't even stand what's going to be happening during that period of time. Amen? So we need the church more than ever before. This is the wisdom of God. The wisdom tells me I need you. I don't need to stay home. I need you. I need to lean on you. I need to know that you love me and I need I think you need to know that I love you. It's important that we have this. This is what the body is all about. To lean on. So, 
what wisdom is that we have discussed in this. The world's wisdom and its leader, one thing, the wisdom of God is not the world's wisdom. The world's wisdom and its leaders are here today, according to this scripture, and gone tomorrow. They are coming to nothing, it says in the scripture. Colossians 2, 8. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. That's a flag for us. Amen? Don't you let people cheat you through philosophy. We need to be resting and trusting on the Word of God. Amen. Even when it doesn't make sense in the world, it does make sense of those who have the Spirit of God, who are leaning on it. The true wisdom that we should be seeking is the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 19, uh, 1, verse 19 through 20. For it is written, I will destroy I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and be, bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And I'm going to tell you when it don't make sense, that's when we need to be leaning. That might be God showing us something when the world is telling us something. And I'm telling you, I'm seeing the world time and time again trying to tell us things. It doesn't make sense to my soul. It doesn't make sense. So, now, the next thing is, who knows wisdom? Who knows wisdom? Not the rulers of the world. They don't understand it. The same leaders that crucified Christ are the same ones that's running things today. The same mindset. Everything about it's about power. And this simple uh, this symbolizes what uh, the leaders have done then and they would do today if the situation would come again. You know, if they're trying to persecute a church for trying to stay open, what would they do for Christ coming? Preaching his word. Amen? And I want to tell you, before, uh, within the past 10 years, there were people being arrested on the streets for preaching the gospel. Did you realize that? So we need to understand that they want to do everything they can to persecute those who believe in Christ today. The world does. They have been corrupted by their sins, their lies, their deception, and their immorality and neglected. In Matthew 13, 15, For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts in turn, so that I should heal them. You see, I, I, I see people even today being interviewed on uh, different news and they're out. Who are you supporting and who are you going for? And, everything like that. and listen, I'm not saying that Trump is, for, uh, is, or is our Messiah. No way, shape, or form. But I am saying that he has pronounced more uh, support for the church than, than the left has. But uh, the, they would say stuff, and I'm saying, where are you getting this? I don't see this. You know, what are, what are you saying? And, and it's things that they were talking about. Uh, uh, speaking about the tax code and things like that, I don't understand where you're coming from. They're they're blind. Have you ever been as to where someone wouldn't hear? I mean, you could be sitting there telling them the truth, and they would not hear, nor would they understand, because that was not what they wanted to hear or understand. Are we seeing that today? Yes, we see that today. Listen, we need to hear with our ears. That means to and understand it with our hearts and then seek God the truth of God through that amen just because it's something that you don't want to hear don't shut it off listen 
If it's not the truth, then just count it. Too many times we just shut it off. I'm not going to hear it because it's not what I believe in. How could you help lead someone to the truth if you're not hearing their deception? Amen? And so we need, in the same way, in the same way that we, when, when we see people like Jehovah Witness or the Mormons, we need to confront them with love. When we start bashing over the head with this, we're not going to win anything. We need to open our arms of love and say, let me, let me tell you where I think. I, I, I have to disagree with you on some things. Let me understand. Let me explain to you why. You see, it's we need to love each other. I, I, I had a cousin that said, well, I'm voting for Well, I said, well, you know what? That's your prerogative. Who you want to vote for, that's your right and your prerogative, and I'll fight for that right. And I'm still going to love you. Amen? This is what we have to do. We're going to make a change in this world. But to people's hearts, they grow dull. They don't want to hear something. So mankind, without the help of the Spirit of God, is unable to know the wisdom of God. We must have the Spirit of and in order to have the Spirit of God, we need to be yielded that we must be born again. We've got to be born again. We have to be born of the Spirit and not just of the flesh. And then we need to begin our journey walking in the Spirit. We can't continue to chase after the things of the world and expect the Spirit of God to really be strong in us. We need to discount this world. I'm in it. I don't have to be of it. Amen. And when there's someone that's different than me, I need to see them through the eyes of God, not my eyes. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm blind with my eyes. But I've got 20-20 vision when it comes to the Spirit of God. Amen. And that's what we need to have. And so our hope of glory is Christ in us. And Christ needs to be seen. I am writing, I wrote a song back in 2017, I forgot about it, I hate it, but I'm finishing up, I'm finishing it up, I'm wrapping it up, I think the Lord wanted me to have a little bit more experience before I got it out there, but it's called Christ in me, and he's my new identity, amen, and that's who the world needs to see, it's Christ in us, for Colossians 1, 26 and 27, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. That's the mystery. The hope of glory. The very hope of glory that we have hope that we have is Christ in us. He's the one that gives us the strength to be able to say no to the tempter. He's the one that gives us the strength that when we're weak to be able to go that second mile when we really, really don't want to. Now, where do we receive this wisdom? It begins by the revelation of Christ. The revelation of the gospel of Christ is God's word. John 1.18 No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. We find God, and, it's, and I've told y'all before, that for a long time I served my mother's God, but He finally became my God. and He was revealed to me by the Spirit of to a point of where I didn't want to play religion anymore. I wanted to get real with my relationship with Christ. And I want to tell you, it changed all my conception of things. What I saw, what I realized. It was so much more than religion. This relationship is rich. And it's real. And it's something that we can enjoy and and benefit from each and every day of our life. Amen? And not only of our life, 
But when we take that step beyond this life, we are in his presence. And then we will be known. Amen? So, is this something we should pursue in our life? To make it a real situation, not something that's just a counterfeit, not something that just looks good on the surface, but it's something that is heart changing and it makes a difference to the depth of your soul, of who you are. And it begins, this revelation of Christ, it begins when we begin to really accept and receive Christ in our life. That revelation, and then it starts beginning to show himself. And he's first your Savior. Oh my goodness, he's the deliverer. He's your healer. He's your comforter. Look at all these things that Jesus is to you. And all the time he's reflecting, he's showing us God. And he's given us to the point, we, in our Sunday school, we're talking about false idols and things like that. We don't have to have idols. We've got the God of God, creator of all things. Amen? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. We don't need a gold idol. So when we hear and receive and obey the word of God, that becomes real to us when we begin to walk. But only the person who receives Christ is the one who is born again. John 3.3 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do you believe in the spirit realm? You better. <laughs> because it's real. And there's a battle going on. It's a battle for your soul. And you better be rooting for the right side. <laughs> and we need to be doing everything that we can be doing. While we are in this flesh, I want to walk in the spirit as much as possible. It's going to change my thought processes. It's going to change my outlook. It's going to change that it's not so much about me, but it's more about me. This is what being and walking in Christ is all about. And I hate the COVID time because I'm not having an opportunity to get around and visit with people who are having surgeries and things like that and go to the hospitals when they need it. I don't like it. I needed to be where Tony was. That's one thing that I'm dreading more than anything at all. We cannot minister to the souls when they need it the most. But why do we receive this wisdom? Well, we receive it. The natural, the natural person is a morally corrupt person. Did you know that? Did you know you were morally corrupt? Did you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We all are, aren't we, without Christ? It's it, it, it just, it just a whole thought process that we live in. And we demonstrate the, the human nature of sin that, that comes in us, and we don't look at anything else. But the person is Christless that walks in the flesh. Uh, Romans 8 and 9, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not yours. So we need the Spirit of Christ, the helper that Jesus said, I want to send you. And that helps us through this life. This natural person, he doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God, but the child of God receives the things of the Spirit of God because of the Spirit of God knows the have you ever had that inkling that you just didn't know and you were trying to make a decision? And let's say you were walking in the Lord and all of a sudden you didn't make that decision that you really wanted to. You went the other direction and it turned out to be the right choice. That's the Spirit of God working. Now, sometimes it doesn't seem like it's the right choice until maybe five years down the road. And you say, you know, I can remember that. It's a good thing I made that choice. I made that decision. The 
the Spirit of God works strangely in us. But the stronger you are, the closer you are to Christ, the more you walk in the Spirit, the stronger the Spirit of God is in you. And He will give you direction. He will give you strength. Uh, it, it truly is true that when we are weak, Christ becomes our strength. That only works for those who are walking in the Spirit of God, not for those who want to walk in the flesh and call themselves Christians. I want to tell you, you talk about hypocrites in your deal. Yes, there are people who are called by Christ's name. And they do more harm and damage for the church than you could ever hope. For that one person to try to carry the word, they can do more harm than they could ever do for it. Because it can hurt this whole body of believers. If one person is ever hurt by a hypocrite, do, do, do they ever forget it? No. No, not until, not until someone forgives. Someone, something's made right where the Spirit of God has come in and shown the truth. But people will hang a hypocrite over the church like nobody's business and say, y'all are all like this. When in fact, no, not all of them. So if we are going out there and we are portraying ourselves to be Christians, shouldn't we walk in the way that Christ is walking? His Spirit. Let them see the spirit of the love of Christ in them and us as we go out there. I want to tell you the, the, the thing that's going to win more souls than more than anything else is for someone to see someone walking in the spirit of Christ instead of just preaching the message. It needs to be seen in actions. It needs to be seen in forgiveness. It needs to be seen in love needs to be seen and forgiving instead of the receiving. This is what it's about to be a Christian. This is what it's about to be walking in the power of God. We are no longer natural people we are of Christ. We are spiritual people. Romans 10 3 says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness have not submitted to the righteousness of God. This is people who try to live by the law and not by the Spirit. Uh, in, I believe we preached on this uh, here all back, but it was in Galatians, and he said, Oh foolish Galatians, who's fooled you? Who's, who, who's, who's changed you? Who's told you that you had to do all these things by the law? Have you got your salvation by the law? Did you receive the Spirit of God by the law? No, you heard it by the the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. So we need to hear. We need to receive it. We need to apply it in our life. Now the believer and the follower of Christ relies solely upon the wisdom of God. And we're, and we're getting through this. There's, there's much more scripture text here than I want. But I'm going to skip down to Philippians. I'm going to end it up with this right here. Philippians 2, 5, 8, very last scripture text. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Today, folks, we need to be walking in the Spirit of God. We need to take on this mind of Christ and walk to the point of death. Die to yourself. You know, this, this cross that it says that we are to take up, it says, follow me, take up your cross and follow me. This cross, it doesn't mean just a typical burden or trouble. It means death. The cross always meant death. We are to die to ourselves and live unto Christ.
Christ. It's Him. The Spirit of God gives us the strength to do what you want. I cannot do that in my natural state. In any of us, we must have the Spirit of God and the wisdom of God to be able to make a difference in this world. I believe God is still in the business of saving souls. And I believe we are assigned the responsibility and the duty to reach out and tell others what God has done for us. But most importantly, let them see what God has done for us. Don't you agree? Let's walk in the wisdom of God. Don't let this wisdom of this world fool you. And when you vote, I still want God's will to rule. Amen? I want him to 